Glad to have you here with us today. Appreciate you being here. It's, uh, I don't know if you've been out any this week at all, but uh, it's, it's kind of moving back toward a, a, little, a little better. We, well, see, we had two birthday parties and a graduation party this week so that uh, we've been out and, uh, you know, it's, it's getting a little bit more like normal today. Uh, so, so it's a good thing. It's a good thing for us to, to see people kind of getting back to a routine that, uh, that they're comfortable with. We've been in an uncomfortable place for quite some time. I mean, if you think about all the way since March 1st, it, we've been in something, right? Well, you know, now, now we're facing a whole new set of problems in our, in our world, especially here in the United States, we're, a whole new set of problems. And, and part of that problem is, is something that we know over time is a bad thing. And that is when you try to delete history, when you try to erase history, you are doomed to repeat it because you don't know any better. That's e even when we have it, we do we wind up doomed to repeat it. We're going to talk about that today as we look at, at the what happened with the children of Israel as they tried to move out. They they wound up trying to repeat history. But there's all kinds of things going on in our in our world today. And, and because because we're trying to quote delete history, we, we people begin to lose what's happened in history. There are people running around today talking about, about slavery being two to four hundred years old. Reality is it's centuries old. We're going to look at that today. Matter of fact, the people of Israel crying out to God because they were in slavery thousands of years ago. Sometimes people want to make the, the whole concept of being a racist about a black and a white thing. Well, guess what? It's not. Racism has been around thousands of years. Matter of fact, in the day, in, today we'll look and see that, that Moses got called a racist because he'd married somebody that his brother and his sister didn't think he should marry. And they didn't like it. Well, they wound up on the bad end of the deal because they did that. See, people, people erase history and then they forget things. Some things have happened forever and ever. But if you know history, if you know history, you know that a lot of things that people talk about aren't true. They're just convenient half-truths to people. And that's the reason we need history. It's the reason we need to keep it. That's the reason we need to know what God says about us as humanity. It's important. But there's no doubt, we, we're, this world we live in, there's injustice, there's wrong, there, there's bad people, there's bad things. And as we've seen, if we look for it, we'll find it. There's no doubt. We, ju we just will. And as I said last week, it's a different story, though, when it finds us. When, when, when we are the recipient of that, it changes our view. And, and, and I know what that does to us, all of us. It causes us to feel a little overwhelmed, a little alone, a little abandoned, a little afraid, uh, even sometimes maybe very scared, afraid. I mean, like in danger, kind of afraid. But just like the people of God that we're going to talk about today, they weren't, they weren't abandoned. They weren't forgotten. They weren't like, you know, hidden from God. God, the Bible says, had heard their cry, their cry for deliverance, their cry for struggle, their cry for, for being in bondage. And God sent them a deliverer. We talked about that last week. Is that, that as God came and sent them a deliverer and moved them out, they, they got to start a new story. And that's oftentimes how it is. When we, when we go through the process of understanding, when God moves us from one place to another, there's an opportunity. Well, so much the fact that we need to realize that oftentimes what happens in that move, as we saw last week, was that Israel wound up out in the wilderness. They were free, but they weren't. They were free, but they weren't. And that happens to people all the time, is that we can find ourselves physically in a place where there's freedom, but emotionally and spiritually and mentally, we're not free. See, Egypt, uh, the, the Israelites kept trying to go back to Egypt. They kept saying, let's go back. Let's go back. Wait, wait, today, today, let, let, let's worship the gods like we did in Egypt. Let's do that. 
Oh man, I know we didn't have much back there in Egypt, but it, it's 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 better than what we have right now because we've run out of food. Oh, we, at least in Egypt we had water and we could drink, and now we're out of water. They kept trying to go back. They kept trying to go back, and then God God brought them to the the land that He was going to give them, and they got there and they they could see across there, and they and they sent they sent people in to check it out, right? To check it out. And, re- and what did they find? Hey, man, these this is this is a formidable foe. These people are big. They're prepared. We probably can't do that. Except for two, two guys, Joshua and Caleb. They said, we can do this. With God on our side, we can do this. But the majority outvoted, and the majority said, let's, let, let's not go in. And what happened? God put them back in the wilderness for 40 years. For 40 years he put them there until everybody that didn't believe they could do it and go in, who was still captive in their heart and in their mind and in their spirit to Egypt, died. And that's where we pick up the story today because now God's going to close that chapter and open a new chapter. We're going to be in Joshua, book of Joshua today. And we're going to talk about when God moves us out, one chapter is closed and a new one opens. Joshua chapter 1, verse 2, God says to to Moses, My servant is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan. My servant Moses is dead. That chapter is closed. We're going to start a new chapter. Not only should you go over Jordan, but you and all the people to the land which I get, I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I will have given you, just like I said to Moses. See, Moses had been given this promise, and, and Moses had been here before. But here we see that Moses didn't get to go. Because he, he struggled with the same thing. He wound up not believing and listening to God and being obedient to God. And he wound up not being able to go in. So God raised up a new man that had already been in, that already believed they could do this, Joshua. Then the scripture goes on to, to tell us in some later verses, As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. Now Moses had done, as we all know, some very spectacular things. He had had basically defeated Pharaoh through the ten plagues that God helped him deliver on the people. He had crossed the Red Sea by stretching out his rod across it, and they walked across on on dry ground. A, A symbol to them that God had set them free and closed them off from the past, but they missed it. While physically they were in the wilderness free, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, they weren't. God had, uh, Moses had used God to come up on a mountain and give him the Ten Commandments. And he had been in the very presence of God so much, the Bible says that his face was lit up. And they had to put a veil over his face so they could even look at him because he, he was so, he shone so bright. That rod would, would be able to strike the rock and give them water. That, that rod would be able to to, to bud and come to life and to show them that rod would be placed up into the air and, and, and salvation would come to the people if they would look and believe. Those things happened. Moses was a pretty powerful guy by all means. God tells Joshua, I'm going to be with you just like that. I won't leave you. I won't forsake you. Be strong. Be of good courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So Joshua gets this directive from God. He says, this is it. We're, we're going we're gonna to do this. Then he tells them something about the people. He says, this book of the law that I've given you, it shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate it on it day and night. Now, that was a, that's a plural, you. That's a plurality of the people of Israel. God says to the people of Israel, you should meditate on this book. Don't lose it. That you may observe it to do all according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous 
and you will have good success. So God lays it out for me. He says, look, if you follow what I'm telling you to do, not only will you be leaving Egypt behind and all the things about Egypt, you, I have now replaced for you the narrative. No more narrative. You see there, for 40 years, they wandered around the wilderness and all these people died. Well, guess what happened? 40 years of babies were born. And so there were people there who had did, never been to Egypt, didn't know anything about Egypt, never seen it, never been in bondage, never been a slave, just been wandering around in the wilderness. So their whole mindset was different. They're, they were very, they looked at this totally different. And God had given them a new narrative, the law of God. He told them, this is how you need to live and keep this with you and it will help you prosper in this new land. So as all that kind of happened and they had a, they had a big celebration and, and the bearing of Moses and all those kinds of things. Joshua determines to go in. So he's, he did what he did, what they did before. He sends in some spies to check out the place. He was a smart military man. And he found out, okay, here's, here's what we're facing when we get across. So they came back, they report to say, we're going to go do this. So they're, they're there at the River Jordan, and the Scripture tells us that the River Jordan was at its flood stage, the time of the year that been a lot of rain in the mountains and water was flooding across, and so it was deep and wide. And God, God gives Joshua some directions about how, how we're going to do this. He says, what we're going to do is we're going to take the priest, and they're going to pick up the Ark of the Covenant, and they're going to walk out into the river. Now, before, it had always been a rod, and it would open up, and then they'd walk across. They're going to walk out into the river. And when they do that, the water's going to back up on both sides, and you're going to walk, and our people are going to walk across on dry ground. And then he, and, and he said, and then, and then when you come across, I want somebody from each tribe to pick up a rock. You'll find the rocks out here in the middle. You're going to pick up a rock, and you're going to carry them across to the other side. So the scripture says in, in chapter 4, then it came to pass that when all the people had completely crossed over, that the, ark, that the ark of the Lord and the priest crossed over in the presence of the people. So they, came, they went in first, got in the middle, then the people crossed over, and then they came out, out from the river. And when the people came up from the Jordan, those 12 stones which they had taken out of the Jordan, Joshua set up at Gilgal. Then he spoke to the children of Israel, saying, When your children ask their fathers in the time, in the time to come, saying, What are these stones? History lesson. He said, When your kids come back here, and their kids, and there's kids' kids, come back here and they find these rocks piled up and they're going to say, what, what's the meaning of this? What's the meaning of this? Then, then he said, you shall let your children know Israel crossed over this Jordan on dry land. Not in muddy land, not in muddy, not in the mud, but on dry land. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan before you until you crossed over just as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which He dried up before us until we crossed over, that all the people of the earth may know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, and that you fear the Lord your God forever. So what can we learn about that? What can we learn about how we live life today when God calls us out and closes one chapter and opens a new one? Because that's what's happened in our world. Our world's never going to be the same again from what's happened. Whatever happens from this point forward, things are going to be different. So how do we live in that different place? Well, part of it is closing the old chapter. Like I said earlier, one of the things that God had to do with the people of Israel was to get Egypt out of them. And eventually what that meant is they all had to die. See, there's things in our life that are going to have to die if we're going to cross over and live in a new place. We're going to cross over and live in a new place. They, they had to have a new vision of what, what the new place looked like. Because, see, they had no vision. They couldn't, nobody knew about Egypt. They'd all died. 
Nobody had been in the promised land except Joshua and Caleb. They didn't know what that looked like. They needed to understand what God was going to do. So God explained that to them in the first chapter of Joshua. He said, it's a land flowing with milk and honey. It's a place where you will prosper. It will be yours for as far as you can see to the left, to the north, to the south, to the east, and the west. It will be yours. Now, we know that there were people living there. And we know they're smart enough to know they weren't just going to walk in and set up camp and everything was going to be okay. Because people don't usually just turn over everything in their life to somebody else. They knew there was going to be something that had to happen. And that, that required a new leader, a different kind of leader. See, Moses had been a shepherd. Moses had guided these people. Moses had been patient. Moses had heard what they had to say. Moses would take their complaints to the Lord. Moses would negotiate for them over and over. Matter of fact, you heard me mention earlier that, that Miriam, Moses' older sister, the one that actually was able to kind of save him from the death at, when he was a little bitty baby and took him in and helped him and nursed him through the process of, get, of, of rising up, she and her brother Aaron got upset with Moses with the fact that he had married an Ethiopian woman. And, and they said, this is, this is not good. God spoke to him, but he spoke to us too, and he had. God had spoke to Miriam. God had spoke to Aaron. And they said, so, you know, he's not the only sheriff in town here. And God, the Bible says, and God was angry. God was angry with them. In Numbers chapter 12, the Bible says that God got angry with them and He called them all out. He said, y'all come on out here. All three of y'all come out here. And the Bible says that the pillar of God came down again and God stood there before them and God spoke to them. He said, who do y'all think y'all are? Who do you think you are to come after this man, Moses? And at the end of that conversation, God struck Miriam with leprosy. With leprosy. And, got, and, and they had to put her out of the camp for seven days. But you know what Moses did? See, Moses didn't get offended. Moses didn't get up all in the air. Moses didn't try to get even with his sister over calling him a racist because he'd married this Ethiopian woman. No, what did he do? He pleaded with God. He said, God, spare her. Spare her. See, because, of, because of what we know about anything in our life that brings about these kinds of situations is, is we have to look past it and love people. So it's about people. It's about people. We're a human race. We're a human race. Anywhere you've gone in civilization, you find slavery. The American Indians, when they captured people, they turned them into slaves. South America, when they captured their neighboring warring tribes, they turned them into slaves. Europe, in European, the, the, I'll just say this since I am one, us white folks, we were really smart. We just set up a whole civilization where we had people at the top and people at the bottom and everybody in between, and, and we just made life be that way. Right? We had this privileged group that had all kinds of titles, and then the unprivileged group that were servants, slaves. If you go to the Middle East, they did the same thing. If you step over into India, they were another smart group like us white people. They decided they set up a caste system. Now, it was based on your name and who, who, who your tribe was that you were born to. But, and so this group, they got more. And this group, they got less. This group, they got nothing. They just had to do the best they could. You go to the, to the Asian people, you find the same thing. Ask anyone who's had to live in Taiwan if China thought less of them. Come to Africa, same thing. Warring tribes, when they captured people and took them over, they turned them into slaves. They made them work for them. See, slavery's not new. Slavery's not a skin issue. It's a sin issue. It's embedded in us to try to put ourselves up over somebody. It started with the very first two people. They tried to outdo each other and wound up being banished from a perfect place where they could live forever. And death came upon us all. And we've been trying to do it ever since. They needed new leadership to go into a new land. Moses wasn't the guy. Moses wasn't the guy. But Joshua was. 
See, Joshua had a different character, a different makeup. Joshua understood that he would have to be strategic and he would have to fight the enemy and he would have to push the enemy back and he would have to take over the enemy. Joshua was a, was, was a person who of, of personal responsibility. Take responsibility for yourself. So when a couple of the tribes said, well, we're going to stay on this side, he said, okay, but you still are obligated when we call you to come fight. Okay, okay. They got, they got in the land and they began to complain about water. And Joshua said, dig your own well. I'm not going to call water out of a rock. Dig your own well. Why? Because you have to be responsible. You have to become responsible for you. Because they'd been running around for 40 years in the wilderness with people who didn't want to be responsible for themselves. They kept wanting to blame and go back to Egypt. They kept wanting to get back to something that they didn't really want. But inside, they still wanted it. And God said, that, that won't work in the new place. The new place, is, they can't be but one God. They can't be but one provider. They can't be but one thing to believe in, and that's me. They needed new leadership. They had to move from a shepherd to a warrior. They needed a new experience. See, these people, the new group, the 40 and under group, except for Joshua and Caleb, the 40 and under group, they didn't have the, they didn't have the experience of crossing over the Red Sea. That happened before they were born. they never seen God do anything like that. And so when they got to the River Jordan, they had to have this crossing over experience too. You see, because for everybody, when you have to move from one chapter from the old to the new, there has to be an experience that you can mark down in the book, so to speak. There has to be an experience, something that, that moves you to the new place. And I'm sure, just like those people that were at the Red Sea that day, Moses stretched out his arm and the sea backed up and they walked across on dry ground. The people that were at the River Jordan, when they saw that same thing, that thing, similar thing happen, they were amazed at the power of God. But that's what it takes. That's what it takes. But these people were ready to cross over. These people were ready to do what's necessary. They were clamoring, let's go get our land. Because it takes a new mindset when you cross over. It takes a new experience crossing over the Jordan. It takes a new mindset. For them, it was all about the rocks that they pulled out and stacked up. A, a, a history marker. Here's what happened today. Now, if, you, if you've ever had a discussion with anybody who's, who's had to change their life, change their mind, change their heart, change their soul, change their spirit, Especially if they've been involved in one of those situations in life that keep calling them back. Now we have a we have a fancy name for that called addiction. Almost inevitably, every one of them is going to pull out their marker out of their pocket. And then they're going to give you, I have been blank for this many years, this many months, and this many days. And I've even had people do it and this many minutes. They look at their watch in this many minutes. They know. Because that marker is a reminder, a history lesson that I don't want to go back. I have crossed over, and not only am I free physically, I'm a free emotionally, spiritually, and mentally from that which had me in captivity before. We live in a world that has to experience that. And that marker today is not some coin. It's not a flag. It's not a constitution. All those things are great, but it's Jesus. Jesus is the only person that's going to make a difference in today's world. Jesus is the only person that can move you from your past to the present to the future. That's only Jesus. Jesus is the only one that can put the love in your heart to love all men as you love yourself. Only Jesus can do that. Only Jesus. But they weren't through. God wasn't through with them. They had a, they had a couple of things that had to happen for them. They had to have a reminder that they carried with them not just the crossing of Jordan, but it had to be personal. It had to be personal. See, you can't do it corporately. That'd be great. So a, a, few, a few religious bodies have tried to do the corporate salvation thing and it doesn't work out very well. There couldn't be a corporate change for these people. God said, okay, line up all the men. 40 years old and under, all the way down to the little babies, 
And we're going to do what we had to do before in the wilderness. All the males had to be circumcised. They all had to be circumcised. A very painful, personal process that had to happen for them. And it took them a while to heal up. But it was personal to them. And until our experiences in this world get personal, until we realize that, that crossing over is a personal commitment and there's going to, it's going to cost us something, even something painful, we won't stay with it. And then God gave them another new thing when He closed the old book and opened the new book. He created a new people. He empowered these people. He empowered them to be His people. God said, wherever you go, I'm going to go with you. Whatever you attempt to do, as long as you go by this book, the book of the law, as long as you go by it, I will be with you and you will prosper. See, God promises to move us out. And whether we move out alone or we move out with a group, we have to have our own personal experience in the process. And so, so how do we do that? Well, first of all, we, we have to be like Joshua and Moses and the, the people of God. We have, to, we have to get alone and we have to listen to God. We can't listen to all the noise that's around us. I think right now in our world, right now, the best thing everybody could do is turn off their radio, their television, their social media for about two or three weeks. And it'd be amazing what would happen in our world. And just listen to God. What does God have to say? You have to be honest with yourself. You have to and realize that it's personal responsibility. Yeah, there's some other responsibilities in our world, but really when it comes down to it, it's you. It's you and God and what you're going to do with what God tells you. That's what God told Joshua. He said, it's up to you. You, you, you and the priests have to wade out into the river. I'm not going to do it like I did with Moses and just stick out the rod. No, you, you have to take action. You have to be responsible for this crossing over. We have to be hungry for the presence of God. Notice God laid that out for him. He said, every day, let the, let, meditate on this every day. Don't miss a day. Because our relationship with God is personal. And then we have to be broken before God. We have to, we have to be broken over our own sins and our own troubles and our own struggles and our own issues that we've created. We have to be we have to be personally responsible for that, but we have to be broken before God. And then we have to let go of our fears. We have, to, we have to take that step and walk over. So maybe here today, we've realized that there's some things that we need to close the chapter on that we kind of been carrying around with us, just like the people of Israel were carrying around. And God's not going to let us go in till we, till we let go of that. Whatever it is, our preferences, our the way we think about something, the way we think about somebody, the way we want to do something, the way we don't want to do something. God said, you got to let go of that. If you're going to live where I live, you got to let go of that. As Jesus told us, he said, you've got to know the truth because the truth is the only thing that will set you free. Not half truths, not the truth that you want, but real truth. So when God moves us out, we can go alone or we can go together. That's the power of the church, I believe, is that God lets us go together. But we first have to go alone. We first have to make our own decision to cross over and close the book. So let me pray for us this morning as we think about that. Father God, today we thank you that you want to, you want to close the old chapter in our life and open a new chapter. But we have to be responsible. We have to have personal responsibility. We have to cross over. We have to realize that, God, that we may be carrying some baggage and that we need to let that go. We need to confess it and let it go. We need to line up with the truth, your word. May we meditate on it day and night. God, help us to do that today. Maybe today, God, we, for the first time in our life, realized that we need the Savior to save us from ourselves. Or we need to make a new commitment that we've made in the past to, to find ourselves with that with that mark, that piece of history, that moment when we crossed over the line of faith. But God, whatever it is today, would you help us take that step? Would you help us cross over? 
Would you, will you help us, God, believe and trust you today? We pray this in the name of the one who came to make that way for us, to give us a marker called the cross. For Jesus came to die and save us from our sins. That if we would believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Christ died for us and was raised and resurrected, that we can be delivered. Wow. God, help us as we believe that today more and more than ever before. We pray this in the strong and mighty name of Jesus. Amen.